Good morning. We have in the studio Kushit Gunasekara and Dilharan Sivaratnam. Kushit Gunasekara from the Foundation of Goodness and Dilharan from OI Way. Welcome to the morning show. Good morning, Salia. Thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Salia, for be inviting us here too. Kushil, you've been with the Foundation of Goodness. You started the Foundation of Goodness, and it's now become huge. When was this all started? Well, I started the Foundation of Goodness way back in 1999, and it's about 23 years to be precise. Um, well, I never dreamt uh, that or comprehended that it could actually um, expand uh, to the levels that it has become who we are today. Uh, I, I went back to my village um, in Sinigama to try and give the rural kids, the youth and the women a chance to excel in life with opportunities, training, facilities and the exposure that I actually enjoyed, you know, being in Colombo, going from the village, um, playing cricket against you. Um, Anand St. Thomas's, uh, I still remember. Um, but every time I came back to the village, I realized that uh, they were far more skillful, much brighter, uh, you know, cleverer, talented, and had so much potential and skills that they didn't have what I you know, actually Enjoyed? encountered, yeah, encountered. So I, I actually wanted to, you know, bring that back into the village and to set up uh, a, a system that they would have equal opportunities. That's really what I wanted to do. Fantastic. But, um, and then I thought, okay, I'll do both uh, the other villages adjoining uh, my village and uh, started to work with the rural school as well. And that was humble beginnings at the time. Murli came along, um, and then he said he wants to also Fantastic. join. So, so Murli join. came after the World Cup and stuff like that. Was yeah, no, I mean like uh, after? yeah, ninety nine, yeah, after the World Cup ninety six. But yeah. because I was also a secretary of the interim committee at the time, and then you know we also ran the World Cup so under nineteen, and then Murli is chatty, and uh, you know easy to communicate with. Uh, right. So. I brought him tactically to the village then uh, he realized and he grew really huge from yeah there. so they, he really he wanted to do something with us and then he made me the manager as well at the same time so we have still uh, the partnership remains intact with and the uh, Dusras. yeah <laughs> and how did how did uh, OIO be uh, get involved in this deal Aaron, and how did you get involved with the foundation of goodness there good question Salia um, we've been supporting causes in Australia for about 20 years and um, thanks to you, around 2012, we were looking for a charity partner in Sri Lanka. And I remember you coming to our boardroom and making the phone call to introduce us to Kushil. So we should thank you for that. <laughs> it's been, I mean, for yeah, me to see this grow to such yeah. a huge project and 10 yeah. years in the making now, fantastic. Fair so yes. now we are with the Hunger Project, is that right? Yeah, I mean, the currently, uh, the timely, topic is feeding the hungry so um, we took this on you know even as far back as since COVID when a lot of people you know were laid back or you know couldn't get to work and you know s so many people are struggling out there with a lot of hardships so uh, we decided we are going to um, support this cause of feed the hungry and but it accelerated you know only during this economic uh, huge downturn, downturn. Uh, in Sri Lanka. And then we set a target of 50,000 you know, families uh, to be done by end of this year. And I can tell you proudly that uh, we will probably get up to 60,000 families uh, feeding so. you know, them with two weeks of you know, supplies where we have come up with a pack uh, experimenting it. So five kilos of rice, three kilos of lentils, and three kilos of uh, flour, which will actually uh, help a family of four to consume the meals for two weeks, and that's only US dollars 10. Equivalent uh, of Australian dollars would be 15. So three cups of coffee, I suppose, yes. if you sacrifice, then, you know. Dil, Dil has a lot of coffees across uh, Cocos. <laughs> so you would, how, is, how is OIOB involved with this whole thing? Um, for, for us, Salia, when we were uh, introduced to Foundation of Goodness, 
one of the keys was to find a partner who was very strong with their accountability, reporting, and transparency. And after you introduced us, I remember going to Sri Lanka and uh, visiting uh, Kushil. And as Kushil, he never asked for money, but he's always asking for money or uh, giving us intentions. And, and he, uh, he said to me, you know, there's a tuk-tuk driver who has lost his leg and uh, he would love to give him a, 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 yeah, prosthetic, a leg, prosthetic yeah. leg. And it would cost $600 to do that. So we went back to the hotel and there's a group of us and we all pooled our money and we gave to Kushil. And what really amazed us was that within 24 hours, I get a receipt saying that, you know, they received the $600. Within a couple of weeks, there's a picture of this gentleman going to the hospital and getting his legs checked out. And then three months later, I get another picture saying that he's now got his leg and he's driving his tuk-tuk. So for us from Australia, we have got a lot of Australian partners and they're very keen to support, but they want to make sure that money is going to the donor. And uh, I think that experience gave us confidence to support Kushil. I think your sustainability and your growth yeah. has been your transparency. Would you agree with that? And your yes, of course. I mean, you know, when you serve humanity, it's uh, you're dealing with other people's uh, wealth, and you need to make sure that as much as you canvass for funding to serve humanity, it's always it's like a sale. Uh, after sale is what is more important than actually before. You know, a lot of people will flirt, flirt around and get the money. And it's about trust, you know, where when you are entrusted with the hard-earned money that you want to care and share with someone, and then, then comes the test, how you give that feedback. As Dilaran said, it's accountability, transparency. But more transparency and more importantly, it's about surpassing the don't expectations. To do something what you didn't expect, you know, so that's the key. And then I think um, while we're on the subject, you know, it's never easy to uh, generate a revenue of a million dollars for charity every year. So I can proudly share with you that in the last uh, 17 years, in particular post tsunami, we have raised about $22 million. So every year we've been raising a million dollars plus. And now we have 15 centers around the country, island wide, serving about 68,000 people you know in rural villages disadvantaged and in our 15 centers about 12,000 are learning free of cost so we're giving them so much you know better opportunities to make headway and excel in life you know that's that's the aim because what we thought Sally at the very beginning what I decided is that you know the disparity uh, between the urban and the rural sectors are so far wide so you need to bridge that divide because what i see out in the villages if you only are able to harness that talent you know sri lanka will be prosperous to the extent that we all aspire to achieve we come to that then how do you sort of go out and look at your donors and do you transfer all this information to them as well and make sure that they are aware of what happens with their donations? Yeah, so, so we are looking to create a platform where Australians who love Sri Lanka want to contribute through Foundation of Goodness. So our goal for us is to make sure that Foundation of Goodness is sustainable. That's our number one. And number two is that uh, we are able to support their overhead cost. Thereby, when a donor gives a dollar for a special project, that money goes straight to the cause. Um, and that's been our main communication. Uh, this year we ran an event uh, to create more awareness and we have brought in more partners to support us on the journey. The, the projects that you do, we were talking about talent. Mm -hmm. There are cricketers, there are yeah. table tennis yeah. players, ba badminton players, athletes. The, the whole gamut of things. Yeah. I mean, there's no limit to what you can do yeah. with what you your reach, uh, Kushel. Yeah. Could you give us just a bit of a... And now, so that people yeah. who are watching this, mm. we realize this is not just another project. This yeah. is a huge project. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, I've always been very, very concerned to be focused on a very wide-ranging 
areas of activities and, and to make them very productive. So it's actually a one of a kind, holistic rural community development model. But it, this all began earlier uh, to flourish uh, post tsunami. Uh, unfortunately, that was the case, unprecedented tragic occurrence. Uh, but we turned the setback into a blessing. And I respectfully remember everyone who sacrificed their lives, you know, um, to make this happen. But, uh, you know, when, when a tragedy occurs, you can't look back and reverse it, right? It's like, you know, if, if you drive a car looking at the rear view mirror, you know, you're going to get into trouble. So you need to, you know, let it go and then embrace the change and not let go of your values and keep doing what you can to support the rural communities from a very holistic kind of standpoint. So whether it's sports, whether it's education, life skills, good values, you know, everything uh, we, we have under one roof. Uh, if, if you come to the Center of Excellence in Sinegama, uh, where it's our flagship venue, uh, it's actually sponsored totally by uh, OIOB, uh, where they have taken the responsibility to look after uh, the center of excellence in particular uh, we have 18 sectors of learning and about three four thousand attend you know those uh, courses and different classes so I I it's actually supplementing the learning in a education system coming back after school and having the better uh, kind of uh, you know services that we provide for them to become more holistic. For example, say a, a lady comes to a center of excellence and goes into women's empowerment. You know, she can at the same time learn English, uh, do cross learning, le go learn computers. Then, you know, she can play sport, she can go and dive. And there are some girls who have done that, you know, learn five or six uh, different areas of skills. And uh, even some of the girls are doing the back office operation for the biggest conglomerate, John Keels, in in our in our flagship venue, uh, they are doing the you know supermarket invoicing, uh, hotel invoices, uh, and the bank reconciliation is done by you know sixteen girls who had no access to computers before, you know. Fantastic. So yeah, so from there you know we've got another client from America. So so these are also bringing sustainable income generation. Plus, these girls don't really have to go to Colombo you know, finding a job uh, and spending money on board and lodging, transport, and the quality of life has also enhanced because they live with their, you know, own, you know, family set up. So a lot of the things that are happening, uh, even I can't keep track because so many things, you know, are happening in, and also when we put up something like that, whether it's uh, Tilharan or OIOB or whether it's MCs, I mean, Australia in particular has been hugely benevolent starting from I must pay this tribute to Shane Vaughan. He I must respectfully remember him again because he was the first one earlier who came to the village three to four weeks after the tsunami with 60 minutes. So he used his influence. You don't need money always to do project. He used his influence and he came with 60 minutes and he telecast and told the story to whole of Australia. So thereby, nothing multiplies so much as kindness. And you know it kept going from one to another. So master builders in Australia picked us up. The Victorian state government built 86 double story duplex homes. You know, Lonely Planet got involved. AFL got involved. So, so Fantastic. many, you know, it is going, um, whether it's Steve Waugh, whether it's Greg Chappell, you know, everyone uh, all came together. And um, the, so, I can't even tell you, uh, you know, how many people have got involved. And I think the Australians have been so benevolent towards our cause. And I think it's also by word of mouth that the foundation of goodness has spread, uh, because it's like going to a restaurant, right? And then if you have good food for value and service is great, then you keep to the other person saying it, you know, okay, this is the place to work with. Correct. But I think more importantly, when you're Serving humanity is also an art, you know, you whilst you campaign to help others, you have to make sure others also, the givers, are also blissfully enjoying that right.
you, Sri Lanka.